Salam students. Let's begin with class eight geography new chapter. That is chapter number two. But before telling you the chapter's name, let me ask you. You all remember what did we learn in the first chapter? Yeah, right. We learned about resources, right? Resources means I think you all remembered it very well. Anything that is required to satisfy human needs, human desire that that is termed as resources. Correct. Now. the second chapter that is land soil water natural vegetation and wildlife resources see in that in first chapter we learned about the classification of resources and the meaning of resources right but in this chapter you are going to learn separately about land soil water natural vegetation and wildlife these are the resources which are very important in our life so we'll be learning all these resources separately in this chapter now let us just go through the content of this chapter in this we'll be learning about the resources land soil water natural vegetation and wildlife first one we are going to begin with land in uh, under that uh, we'll be learning about the land land use and the conservation of land resources now let's begin with land land is among the most important natural resources right Now look at the image that is given to you in the slide. It covers only about thirty percent of the total area of the Earth's surface, and all parts of this small percentage are not habitable. Now, what is the meaning of habitable? Habitable means where the people don't live. The habitants are not there. That means the people are not living in that particular area in that particular land. So children, I hope you understood this that uh, it covers only thirty percent of the total area of the Earth's surface. It means seventy percent of the Earth's surface is covered with water, and thirty percent is the land. Okay, and in that also from that small percentage, that is from the thirty percent also, all parts are not habitable. Not habitable means I told you it is means the people have not occupied that area, that land, right? Now. the uneven distribution of population in different parts of the world you all know very well the distribution of population is not even right not even means it is not same on each and every part correct it is uneven why in different parts of the world is mainly due to the varied characteristics of land and climate correct so here we can say the rugged topography the steep slopes of the mountains the low lying areas susceptible to water logging and desert areas thick populated areas are normally sparsely populated or un uninhabited that is the habitants are not living in that particular land that means that is not fit for the people to live there plains and river valleys offer suitable land for agriculture see children you can understand from this the, uh, the land that is suitable for agriculture definitely that land will be densely populated correct why because the plains and river valleys that is the land which is suitable for the people for doing the agriculture work so wherever people can carry out this agriculture agricultural activities there you can say these places these regions are densely populated areas of the world now the next is land use now from the word itself land use you will understand the meaning of it right land is used for different purposes do you agree this with this thing yes definitely it is not only used for agriculture but for forestry mining even for building houses roads and setting up of industries that is the meaning of land use that is the, that means the land has been used for different purposes for agriculture for forestry for mining for building houses that includes everything and that is called as the land use now use of land is determined by physical factors as well as human factors now let us see what are the physical factors that determine the use of land that is the topography I hope you all know the meaning of topography very well. Topography means what? It is a detailed map of the surface features of land. That is either it is hilly region or it is mountains or uh, river beds or so and so. Okay, so this is like the topography includes all that things. 
then soil soil is also very important thing for the use of land we know each and every type of soil is not fit for agriculture correct then climate the most important factor and even minerals if uh, that particular land is having minerals then that is suitable for mining right and availability of water the most important thing is the availability of water now the next is the human factors now what are the human factors human factors includes population and technology if that particular area is densely populated right then that area the use of the land of that particular area depends on that as well as the technology available that two are the important human factors that are the determinants of the land use pattern now children just go through this a table has been given to you where you can see that land use in selected countries the countries has been given here australia brazil canada china france india japan russia uk usa right you can see it has been given the percentages of crop land pastures forest area and the other use now you can see in each and everything in australia the pastures is 56% that is the highest one okay whereas in brazil you can see the forest area is more 66% in canada you can see the other use the land of is used for other purposes that is 52% and in china you can say 42% is used for the other purposes whereas in france you can say cropland is used for uh, the percentage is 35% whereas in india you will say that the cropland is 57% in japan we can see here the forest is 67% whereas in russia we can see the forest area and the other the land used for the other purposes is same that is 44% 44% and uk you can see pastures are more there that is 46% and in usa that is 26% and that is the total is given all over the world cropland is 11% pastures are 26% then forest is 31% and for other uses it's 32% now land can also be classified that will be divided on the basis of ownership that is divided into that is private land and community land now let us understand i think from private the word itself private land is private land means it is owned by individuals whereas community land is owned by the community for common purpose it means any common person can use that like for collection of fodder fruits nuts or medicinal herbs so this community lands that is that can be used by anyone so it has been termed as common property resources because it is useful for each and every person belonging to that particular community that is the reason it has been called as common property resources now the next topic that we will learn in this is change in land use over time now you all know very well that the availability of land is limited right can we increase that no because that is a resource we can't uh, change that and whereas if we'll talk about the demands of uh, of all the human beings that is of all of us are ever growing right whether it is limited no definitely not it is ever growing so the quality of land also differs from place to place that is the reason when people started encroaching the common lands to build up commercial areas it is not only used for agriculture purpose See, we know rural area in rural areas people use it for the agriculture purpose the most the land is used for that right but whereas if we we'll talk about the urban areas that is used for the commercial purposes for houses for complexes for building schools hospitals and so many things correct so today the vast changes in the land use pattern also reflect the cultural changes in our society now here you can see that a image has been given to you the land has been used for different purposes right look at the image that is given to you here now here the now we will learn about uh, the threats to the environment 
land degradation landslide soil erosion desertification these are the major threats to the environment why these are the major threats because of the expansion of agriculture and constructional activities so now to control this we need to conserve our land resources right so the next topic we are going to learn here is the conservation of land resources now some of the common methods that can be used for conserving land that are afforestation land reclamation regulated use of chemical for for pesticides and fertilizers and checks on overgrazing now see as we know the growing population and their ever growing demand has led to a large scale destruction of forest cover correct deforestation and arable land and has created a fear of losing this natural resource therefore the present rate of degradation of land resources need to be checked now what is the meaning of afforestation i hope you all are very much aware it means that it is a process of planting more and more trees or sowing more seeds right then the next is land land reclamation what is that land reclamation see it is a process of creating new land from oceans seas river beds or lakes then the third one is the regulated use of chemical pesticides and fertilizers there are to maintain that fertility of that particular land the pesticides and fertilizers should be used and the checks on overgrazing what is our checks on overgrazing that is for the grazing the separate land should be kept so that the land where the agricultural work is going on that will not be destroyed by the animals at the time of grazing so these are the common methods that can be used to conserve land now here i have shared with you the images of all the methods that will be used for conservation of land the first one is a forestation and the second one is land reclamation and the third one is the regulated use of chemical pesticides and fertilizers and the fourth one is the checks on overgrazing now the next topic that we are going to learn in this the landslides landslides what is a landslides now look at the image that is given to you here landslides are simply defined as the mass movement of rock debris or earth down a slope they often take place in conjunction with earthquakes floods and volcanoes a prolonged spell of rainfall that is if the rainfall has been continued for the longer period of time that can also cause heavy landslide that can block the flow of river for quite some time the formation of river blocks can cause havoc to the settlements that is there on it once that river blocks has been that the formation of river blocks has taken place after it's burst it is really going to create a havoc for the settlement the people those who are living in that particular area then in the hilly terrain landslides have been a major and widely spread natural disaster you all have heard about this special especially on the hilly areas we have heard whenever the peer especially at the time of more and rainfall we have heard that the landslides have taken place and the road has been blocked for uh, the people to pass on so we can see that uh, people are not able to move also because of that landslides correct so that really that natural disaster that often strike the life and property and that occupy a position of major concern now to control that that mitigation mechanism is required what is that mitigation mechanism that is advancement in scientific techniques has empowered us to understand what factors cause landslides see once people are aware like the scientifically they are understood what are the causes of the landslides then to control it and how to manage them some broad mitigation techniques of landslides are as follows first is the hazard mapping now for hazard mapping means first the mapping should be done the location of that places which are prone to landslides 
and such areas can be avoided for building settlements see if that hazard mapping has been done then the settlement will not be done in that particular area where the which is prone to the landslides right and the second one is the construction of retention wall to stop land from slipping see landslide is nothing but it the land slips down right then to control that the construction of retention wall is required once that retention wall is done uh, has been built up there it will stop the land from slipping down then the next is increase in the vegetation cover vegetation cover again nothing else but it is a forestation that is an effective way to arrest landslide and one more is the surface drainage control works are implemented to control the movement of landslide along with rain water and spring flows so children here we have completed with the today's uh, topic that is the land resources let's have the quick recap of what we have learnt in the session today we learnt about the land as is among the most important natural resource right we saw it covers about 30% of the total area of the earth surface correct then we learnt about the land use in that we saw about the land is used for different purposes correct such as agriculture forestry mining building houses roads and setting up of industries that is called as a land use then we saw the factors that is determining the use of land physical factors as well as the human factors correct and next to that we learnt about that uh, conservation of land resources we learned the methods to you to be used for the conservation of land resources in that we learned about the afforestation land reclamation regulated use of chemical pesticides and fertilizers and the checks on overgrazing correct then we learned about the landslides and how to control the landslides that is mitigation mechanism correct so just go through the slides and try to understand this topic very well and after completing this you will get the worksheet link in the description of this video okay the next topic soil will be learning in the next session till then take care